Hello, I'm Dwight Norris of FishNetwork.com, and today we're going to be talking about what's the best bait for bass, so stay tuned. When it comes to what's the best bait for bass, you really have to think about all the things that are available out there to fish for bass. You have your spinner baits, you have your crate baits, you have your, your spinners, you have worms, you have lizards, you have frogs, you have buzz baits, you have chatter baits. The list goes on and on. Oh, don't forget jigs. But really, what is the best bait for bass? You have to think about many different things. Things. You have to think about what kind of season it is. You have to think about what the fish are doing. You have to think about what you're doing. Like right now, I'm freezing. What is the bass doing? How can I catch the bass? Are the bass on the shoreline right here? Or are they out there in the deep? You have to think about these things. So, overall, when I have made my fishing experience come to use, the one bait that comes through all the time in all the situations, in all the environments, and with all the types of largemouth bass, or smallmouth bass, or spotted bass, or that weird bass down in Georgia or Florida, or that's the name of it, it comes down to one single bait. And that number one bait is the worm. Okay, okay, you probably saw this coming. You know that the worm is a tried and true bait from the past, 30s, 40s, 50s, whatever. And even now, when you look for a live bait for fishing locally, flakes, streams, and most likely you're going to catch either a panfish or a bass, you know that bait is going to be a live worm. If you want to spend a little more money, you're going to get some local forage. You have to know what that local forage is. Just grabbing any minnow isn't going to trick every fish. Because if, it's, because it isn't, if it isn't local, then they're going to be a little wary. Hmm, what's a golden shiner doing around here? What's this Menhaden doing in the freshwater? What? What is this guy thinking? Anyway, why? So, let's go. Right now, it's the winter. It's not normally when you see bass fishing boats out here ripping up the water of the weekend. But, it's still time for a worm. And, let me tell you why. The worm can be used in all the seasons. There are a variety of techniques. One, you have your Texas rig. You can Throw that in a deep bush, you can hook it weedless and jig it real slow if you know the spots where the fish are. They're all bumped up on the shoreline right now, right here. That shadow trying to get away from the sun, trying to cool down, trying to hang on the outsides where all the, the bait is and they don't want to stink up on them. That's the ambush point. And you can throw it in there many different ways. Like the Texas rig, you can do it weightless, you can do it weedless, you can do it open, you can do it wacky. And it all works. It all works. No, it's cold. I think we all know they're out there, out there in those deep holes, specifically in the deep holes here in the Charles River. There are more on the other side of the Mass Ave bridge. Check out my previous video about that information in the uh, Muddy River in inlet. Um, and you'll know that there are other ways to use the worm. There's the drop shot. There's the famous Ned rig. Do you think that's not a worm? It's a worm. That's what it is. In reality. It could be thought of something else when it's underwater doing something else, but it's a worm. So those are two <laughs> two famous things you can do. You can also just drop it down with a weight of some sort. You can do the Carolina rig down deep if you're if you're casting it in a ways and dragging it and letting it float up. You can add a little you can you can do many different things. There's also customizations you can do to the worm. You can add little weight inserts to it. You can add rattles. You can add little air bubbles so it floats up like on a Carolina rig or um, or even if it's weightless. You can add uh, air into it so it floats to the surface or it's under a weight like a Carolina rig and it still floats up while the weight's down. So you know it's going to stay in the strike zone a couple feet off the bottom but the bass may be hitting. So that's something you want to think about. Uh, it's also uh, a good supplement to other other baits. Like the spinnerbait needs a trailer. And you can use you know double tails, 
You can use a regular worm. You can cut it in half, make it shorter. If the fish are like biting on the on the last little bit of it, you can add the worm to the main hook and have it drag back so the tail is flickering around the trailer hook. And then when you try to nip at it, they're actually getting caught. Instead of you like, oh man, I just missed that fish. That stinks, man. What do I have to do to make them bite the whole bait? Well, this is one of the tricks you can do. Also, um, you know, think about some other things. Some things you don't really think about when it comes to what's the best bait for bass. What's the best bait for you, your budget? You don't want to be spending $10, $15 for a lure and then it works, you know, sometimes. It's, it's like a it's like a, a crankbait or something. And you may find a fish, you may not find a fish. And then if you do get hung up on some deep water structure or somewhere where you can't reach to get it out, like you're fishing from the shoreline here, and you're like, boom, I can't reach my $10 lure. If I pull too hard and that line breaks, I'm done for. There goes my 10, 15 bucks. I've done this before, it's not fun. And worms are really cheap. You can buy a bag of them for five, six bucks, like high quality ones. Or you can get the cheap ones, you know, and add in your own kind of like flavor to it. Like Berkeley has their own certified uh, taste to them that makes the fish hang on lighter, longer. And you can get your own spray on bottle version or, or some other type of a uh, scent attractor and use it for that as well. Uh, it's also easy to use. There's many techniques like I talked about before. The Ned Rig has its own um, technique. The Drop Shot, Drop Shot has its own technique. Texas Rig, you know, you have the slow, the slow hops. You can do it many different ways. You can try them all out, but it's really all the same thing. And most people can do these things. It's not like a super hard technique you have to do with a crate bait, bounce it off the stump, pause, uh, reel it again. Hope you don't. Hope you do it right and at the right time, so you don't get snagged up in some, uh, some you know, overhanging tree or bush or whatever, because it's usually weedless most of the time. So you don't have to deal with those kind of things. One of the best things about it is that it actually requires knowledge of where the fish are. For a crankbait or a spinnerbait, you're usually knows, i.e. the fast baits, to figure out where on the water are the fish. This is what a lot of professional fishermen do. They use their fast crankbaits and spinnerbaits, chatterbaits, even like frog lures to figure out where are the fish holding up. I can't find them. But then once they find them, they catch them more methodically, more efficiently, more often, they go to slower baits. They put on that worm, they put on that jig, and they get in there real slow. I know he's in between these two weeds. I felt that bite, or I saw him jump there, or he chased, a, he chased some kind of forge. I know he's hiding in there. You flip in there, give a little twist. Next thing you know, the, the weight goes weightless. It's not a bite, but weightless. Boom, you pull back on that rod, and bam, there's that five, seven, ten pounder, ten pounder. And you're like, whoo, baby, yeah, I am a pro now. Maybe, maybe not. But you can think that. That's cool. So, yeah, it's all good. So, what I said earlier about the pro choice. A lot of pros go with the worm, and they you'll see them adding weights. You'll see them adding bubbles. You'll see them adding rattles to it. You'll see them cutting them. You'll see them adding a little highlighter or a little red flake to it to look like it's like damaged or make it more visible in low light water. The pros like worms, and they know how to use them. If you look at their YouTube channels or you watch them on Bass Masters on TV or at the FLW tour like like my man Brian Latimer, B-Lat, and he'll show you all the techniques specifically for Nedrick, which he loves. He likes to see their lures. I personally haven't tried them, but I will very soon. Matter of fact, I'm just going to buy his product and try it out. See how it works here like Charles River and other local areas. That's going to be cool. Oh, yes. Worms are also mentally for a fish, an easier lure to consume. It's not like a bait, you have to chase it around. The big fat fish are gonna actually be, you know, they're gonna be working really hard to catch a, catch a bait fish. But if you have a worm, it's slow, it's, in a, it's dropping from the shoreline or it's dropping from somewhere where they expect it to drop. And when they know it's falling, they know it can fall right in their mouth and it's not gonna try to escape, it's not gonna slap them, it's not gonna run gonna get eaten it's an easy meal baby you can't pass that up so that's another reason why the worm is the best lure for bass or really anything there's also taste when you when you actually use worms most baits come with some kind of taste 
like the Berkeley power, and that allows fish to think about, hmm, is this real or not? That extra one, two, ten seconds is enough for you to feel either the bite or that the fish, or either that the, the bait is weightless and that something's on there, something's moving it. And I've felt that many times. Or I, I've even seen the line move from left to right just like this and not feel anything. I'm like, man, something got my bait. Boom! Gotcha. It's all good. So, in conclusion, the worm is the best bait for bass. And that's what's up. So, if you're liking this video, you're liking the Fish Network thing, like, share, subscribe, do all the socials, and check me back next time. And if you need help to go fishing more often and be out here, if you're in the city working, 95 job, you're in that office, and you're like, damn, I can't go out fishing, man. This sucks. Well, I have a system for you. Go to fishnetwork.com, and then on the top of the page, you'll see a link for my online course called the Everyday Fishing System, which is real quick. Well, not quick, but it won't take you long to go through it and see what I'm talking about and how you can get out of here every day if you want to and go fishing just like me. Now, excuse me if I'm not looking directly in the camera because I'm using the iPhone, and sometimes I forget where the actual camera is. So, do your thing. Go fishing when you can, and when you can't, call me up, go to my website, and figure out how you can go fishing more often.